Welcome. Um, if you haven't heard me speak before, um, hopefully this is a, a shock to the system. Uh, I want everybody eyes up, paying attention. We we'll try to give you some nuggets here tonight. They'll help change your life. So if you're tired, if you're sleepy, this is not the session to be in because we're going to over the next 20 to 30 minutes. It's not going to be long. Try to really impacts you in a way that you haven't been impacted before. You've, you all heard the old adage, if I sat where you sat, well, I've sat in those same seats that you sat in. And tonight, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. And my story is a classic underdog story. I'm someone that a lot of people gave up on. A lot of people did not believe in. I grew up in public housing. We didn't have a lot of money, didn't have a lot of resources in my neighborhood. And many people counted us out. But there was something inside of me that says, you know what? I cannot quit. I cannot give up. So even when I got to Fair State University, as he mentioned, I, I played football here. A lot of people felt like, hey, you know what? He's an athlete. Maybe dumb jock term. But for me, that was all motivating. And tonight, I'm going to talk to you about things that hopefully motivates you to grab your dream. How many people in here want to work in sports? Great. Everybody, almost, wants to work in sports. Where it's the hardest business in the world to get into. You know why? Because everyone thinks they can do it. Everyone sits back in their Monday morning quarterback. And they can, they can analyze the games, and they can figure it all out. They can hire the right coaches. And you all played it growing up. So it's very, very difficult to get into. I don't want to scare you, but I want to be real with you. It's, it's difficult. It's tough. And a lot of people in your seats want to be in this business. And there's a small percentage of people who are going to make it. And the reason why there's a small percentage of people who are going to make it is because most people, probably like most of you in this room, are going to try to casually get into sports and casually build that career in sports. And you know what? Casual will not get you there. That's not going to work. So if you're looking to kind of ease into it, you can forget about that. It's not going to happen. So you have to figure out another plan because, like I said, there's thousands of people all over the United States trying to get where you are. So I'm going to go through it here. Again, I'll, I'll save questions to the end. Uh, the first thing, education. Number one, you're here to get an education. You can't pursue any career or any dream without having that education. Because if you don't have the education, everything you say, ideas, thoughts, is all hot air. It means nothing. When I was here at Fair State University, my number one priority was to walk across that stage. And I was fortunate to walk across the stage twice after I received my master's degree. But I knew that that was the start. That was the prerequisite of everything. So right now, if you're in these classes and you're just getting by, that won't, that won't cut it. Start turning it up and really focusing in and honing on your studies because education Changed my life forever. It made me never have to go back to public housing. It made me never have to eat government cheese. It made me never have to do a lot of things I had to do when I was a kid. Education. People ask me all the time, what's the number one thing that changed your life? Education changed my life. And it would change yours. So make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do in the classroom. Next thing, beyond your education here, start looking for internships. Make sure you start really honing in on people that and opportunities to get an internship. I did several internships. I think I did five internships as an undergrad. Remember that. Five internships as an undergrad. Dr. Ray went to all of them. From Detroit to right here in Big Rapids to Cadillac to Grand Rapids to Muskegon, all over the place because I wanted to get my name out there. So internships are very important. How about grad school? That's the next piece. Think about grad school. There's so many people that have undergrad degrees, right? 
25% of America, I think the numbers is, has an undergrad degree. Guess how many have grad degree, postgraduate degrees? Anyone? Huh? No, much lower. Look it up, it's about three or 4%. Very few people have grad degrees. So if you want to separate yourself, go to grad school like I did. That was very important. I did it in, in under two years, but it was important to my development because I was able to say, you know what? I'm, now I'm competing with the next person. I have something over them because most people do not have that graduate degree. So that's very important. So remember, number one, education, internships, very important. Number two, hustle, real simple, right? Wrong. Not many people out there understand what that means. Who, who can give me a, a true definition of hustle? What does that mean? No one knows? To grind and be enthusiastic and really get after it. That, that's, that's part of it. You want to, go ahead. Do something with a sense of urgency. That's, a, that's another part of it. Every day you wake up, you want to ask yourself, what did I do today to get better? How am I improving? When I wake up, even now, I'm still trying to get better. I'm working like I'm an intern. And I'm the director of the department, but it's, it's important, it's imperative to me to hustle every single day. I'm talking about beat people to the spot. When I was here at Fair State University, I started a TV show called Between the Lines. At that time, we had no TV shows here or to, to highlight our student athletes and our sports. And we didn't have money to do it. I remember going to Dr. Ray and saying, hey, listen, I want to start this TV show. She, she told me, you know what, come up with a plan and come back. I came up with a plan, got it all down on paper, went back to her, said, here's my plan. She said, now that's great, but now we need some money. I'm an undergrad. I said, okay, I don't have any money. How are we going to do this? So I went back to my dorm and I thought. I said, you know what, I, got, I have to start at the top. So that next day I put together another plan, brought it back to Dr. Ray, and said, here's my plan to get some finances. She said, what is it? I said, hey, we're gonna, I'm going to go talk to the president of the university. And she looked at me like, are you serious? I said, yes, I'm serious. I want to do this TV show, this sports TV show so bad, I'm going to go talk to the president of the university. Do you know I went to talk to the president of the university? And they said, hey, you got to come back. And they told me to come back five times. But I kept coming back. And finally the lady said, boy, you're really persistent. And I'm thinking like, yeah, I am persistent because this is a part of what I'm trying to do. And so I finally got that meeting with the president of the university and they gave us $10,000. Let me say that again, you, you guys aren't listening. They gave us $10,000 to do this show. That was huge. So we were able to get some backdrops and some cameras and do, do, do a whole bunch of things and the show went on the air between the lines. It started out on the Ferris channel. It had success in its first year. The next thing we know in year two, we're on 9 and 10 and Fox, Fox 33. All northern Michigan and some people in southeast Michigan are seeing this show at Ferris State University started by a student. You know why? Because I didn't stop after she told me to come back the first time and the second time. That hustle, that hustle, that's everything. If it's not in you, no one can ever get it out of you. So don't look for anybody to, to support your dream and say, hey, nobody's helping me. No, I, I, I can't do it. It starts with you. When I came with that idea, I didn't expect, I, I wanted Dr. A to look over the documents to make sure everything looked good. Aesthetically, I didn't ask her to write it and come up with the idea and the concept for this show. That was, that was on me. That was my dream. She was just there to support it. In this day and age, I feel like there's too many people out there looking for people to bail them out and looking for somebody to, to save them. 
guess what, people? There's nobody going to save you. Nobody's coming to save you. So you better save yourself and hustle and grind every single day. Number three, building relationships. Very, very important. We must build relationships. And let me get this straight, because a lot of people out there get this really misconstrued. Networking is not building relationships. That doesn't work. Someone come up here real quick. I'm going to demonstrate what people feel like is building relationships. I'm a student. You work at a company. Shake my hand. How you doing? I'm Ira Children, a student at Fair State University, and you at whatever company. Nice to meet you. Here's uh, my information. Great. Boom. We built a relationship, right? That's networking, right? No. That's what a lot of people think. You know what? This person right here has forgotten all that information as soon as he walks away. It's done. It's gone. That's not real building relationships. Building authentic relationships is, how you doing? Iris Children's Fair State University student. Do you have a card, sir, that I, can, that I can reach out to you, maybe connect with you? Boom, I got his card. You can have a seat. I got his card. Now, next thing I'm going to do once I get his card, I'm going to give him a call. I'm going to call him up and say, hey, remember we met, blah, blah, blah. He's not going to answer the phone because most people don't. And that's okay. I'm going to leave a message. And then after I leave that message, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to email and say, hey, you know what? I called, left you a message. Here's my information, blah, 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 blah. It's all down there. I'd love to connect at some point. He's still not going to answer that probably. So next, what am I going to do next? I'm going to call his secretary and, and ask him or her, hey, is there a time I can set up a, to meet with this individual? I really want to talk to them. They say, what do you want to talk to him about? I say, I want to talk to him about him. I said, I want to talk to him about him. They said, okay, you want to interview him about him? Yes, I want to interview him about his career. My goal one day is to be where he is. So I want to interview him about his career. That's it right there. Now you got him. You know why? Because most people love to tell you about how they got there and their story. So now, I, go to, I get a chance, I finally get that meeting with him, right? And we sit down, and for 30, 30 I say, I only need 30 minutes. And for 25 of those 30 minutes, we, I'm interviewing him, telling him about, he's telling me all about how he got there, his school, everything. Everything's going well, right? And then all of a sudden, that last two to three minutes, you know what he does? What? He says, tell me about you. Tell me about your story. And then I start, then that's when I'm really getting excited. Because then I start telling him about my story. And, and then he starts to be intrigued about my story. And so now we've developed a little bit of rapport. So in that 30 to 40 minutes, we, we, we built that connection. We built that relationship. And after that is the time I'm going to continue to follow up with him and build that network and continue to, to, to move forward. As I always say when I come to these things, you need a board of directors. You need a personal board of directors. Who knows what that means? That means you need five to seven people that you know in the industry or surrounding the industry you want to be in that you have relationships with, that you've built relationships with over time, that you can call up. When I got, I'll give you, tell you a little story. When I got my job at Oklahoma's High School, I felt like I was a really good candidate, had a great resume. But I called one of my personal board of directors, a guy named Gregory Kelser. Greg is an analyst on Fox Sports Detroit, does all the Detroit Pistons game. Good friend of mine for like 15, 20 years. Greg went to Michigan State University. You know, who knows where Oklahoma's High School is? right next door to Michigan State University, right? So I, I called Greg, I said, Greg, I need a favor. I need you to make a call for me to Oklahoma's High School. This is after I interviewed. He called and made the call and talked to the people there. 
I felt like I interviewed well, but guess what? The call from Greg didn't hurt because they knew him. He had cachet in that area, right? He was, he's one of the people on my board of directors. Relationships, people, is everything. Build them. Authentic ones. Find your X factor. That's very important. In the sports world right now, you have a blueprint of where you're going. A blueprint of how everything is going to work out, right? In your life, in your career. Well, guess what? Once you start down the road, it's going to go like this. And you're going to say, wow, how does that, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to work out. I always wanted to be in sports broadcasting, sports journalism. That's why I took this major. That was very important to me. I loved it. TV, radio, print, I've been able to, fortunate to do all of those things. But a bulk of my career, about 10 years of my career in sports, have been in athletic administration. Whether it be at the NCAA National Office in Indianapolis, where I spent multiple years, or at Oklahoma High School, where I've spent multiple years. Athletic administration has been a, a, a huge part of my career. Well, my true passion is that also, athletic administration, but it's also sports broadcasting. So when I say find your X factor, what I was able to do was, okay, when I got in athletic administration at Oklahoma High School and became the athletic director, I started doing lots of things where I can really send out information on our student athletes. I started doing things where I can really promote them, which is great. That's, that's what I love to do. I love to write press releases. I love to promote our student athletes. I love to put stuff on social media about them. It's going to help them, obviously, but it's also my passion to do it. A couple weeks ago, I started a TV show inside Okemos Athletics. So the X factor in all of this is my passion for athletics. It could be athletic administration or it could be sports broadcast. They, they can go together. But the key is understanding that all these things that you have aren't necessarily going to line up. You have to make them work. And you have to find that X factor. The X factor should be you want to work in sports. And everything else you should be able to, to make work. Does that make sense? The, you want to work in sports with the X factor. Everything else should make work. And sometimes, what you, sometimes that X factor is maybe something that you're not the best, I mean, that you're the best at, and the other part of it, it may not be. I'm going to give you a quick story. A guy named Colonel Sanders. You guys heard that name? Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? Well, he tried multiple businesses. His whole goal in life was to be a businessman, right? He really wanted to be a businessman. He was selling insurance, doing all kinds of things to be a businessman. And he was on his father's 20th adventure of being a businessman when his insurance was tanking. His insurance company was tanking. He invited all these people over to his house to make a final pitch to sell insurance. And they all came over. And once they got there, one by one, they all said, you know what? Man, thanks for inviting us. We're not interested in this insurance. So he, he said, boy, I, I'm just a failure. I can't figure this out. And the last person said to him, he said, you know what? I'm not interested, interested in this insurance. But boy, the meal and that chicken you made was unbelievable. He made everybody dinner. The chicken was great. So guess what? He took that one little, one person saying that chicken you made was unbelievable and turned that into what? KFC. So now he, in turn, became what? Aha. Does that make sense? So he was thinking wrong. He was thinking like, you know what? I got to do it through insurance. I got to do it through real estate. I got to do all these other things. But his true talent was cooking. But 
he realized, hey, you know what? I can still, that my X, that's my X factor. I can still, my X factor is still business. I can turn that into something. And he turned himself into a businessman through that love for cooking and making it work. It didn't go how he wanted to go, and that's how your career is going to go. It's not going to be how you draw it up, but it, can be, it will be there. The final thing is do more than the job description. Do more than your job description. I was fortunate enough to be in a, be in a school district and have a great leadership where I'm, I'm given reign to kind of run, run my own show and do the things that I want to do. And guess what? The majority of the things I do are outside of my job description. Of course, we're going to have the officials there. We're going to have our teams ready. We're going to have student athlete welfare. We're going to hire good coaches. We're going to manage coaches. We're going to do all the things that an athletic director does, right? That's right. But if you look at the rest of the, all the rest of the things that we do, they're outside the job description. We, we was able to start an athletic hall of fame. That wasn't in my job description. We were able to get obviously new facilities, get a new strength and conditioning center. That was not in my job description. I started a newsletter that we send out to all of our uh, alumni and, 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 and constituents. That's not in the description. We started this TV show a few weeks ago to promote our student athletes. That's not in our description. We have a strong presence on social, all social media platforms. That's not in the description. All the things that I really enjoy doing, a lot of them aren't in a job description. And where a lot of young people, I feel like, fail from advancing is they want to do just enough. They want to do just enough in, this, in that job description. They say, well, my job says I'm supposed to be doing X, Y, and Z. Well, that's not enough. That won't work. That'll keep you in the same job you've been in. That'll keep you not getting promoted. When I was here at Fair State University, I started out basically as an intern. And in five years, I got four promotions in five years. And the reason I have got those four promotions, it wasn't because I was doing my job. Yes, I was doing my job, but I was doing a lot of things outside of that. We started a lot of different programs. If you look at my resume, it said create, 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 all through it. And the reason why, and it says new, started, historic, all those words are in there. You know why? Because that's how I'm thinking. I'm not thinking doing just enough. I'm not thinking just to get by. I'm thinking, I'm waking up thinking, how can, I, how can we be great? Not good, not solid, not okay. I'm talking about great. That's how you advance. That's how you, as young people say, secure the bag. That's it. You have to do more than is expected. Be that person out there that they say, man, how'd you do that? How'd you take it to that level? That's important. I see too many people call me or see me say, hey, Mr. Childers, we haven't figured out how to get to the next level. I'm, I'm five years in, or I'm 10 years in, and I'm still at the same level. You know who that's on? That's on you. I used to have a professor that, not Dr. Ray, but a different professor that he, he had a mirror outside his, his door for office hours. And he was, he was on the top of the, on the top it said, the result of your grade and then had a mirror. It's you. It's nobody else. So you have to say, when you get your job description, that's your first career, your first job. First, you got to be good at your job. You got to be good at the basics. If you're screwing up the basics and you're not good at the basics, that won't work. You got to be good. Don't get me wrong. You have to be good at the basics. But once you get those basics down and you have a good grasp of your job, then you say to yourself, how can I add value? How can I add value to this company? 
something that's not already there. You know what's the most exciting thing to me is? Is somebody telling me, hey, you know what? Here's a blank sheet of paper. Come up with a concept to help us. Help us get better. And that should be exciting to you, too. You know why? Because that's not somebody telling you to do something. That's, uh, that's somebody telling you to you utilize your skill set and be creative and create. If you want to be, be high up there, if you want to really advance in your career, you have to do more than is expected. Blow people away. Make them say, wow, that person over there is special. All these things sound basic, and a lot of them are. It's not necessarily we're changing the world, but you'd be surprised. A lot of people aren't doing them. And then they wonder why they're in the position that they're in. So I want you guys to do these things. Make it imperative that you do them. So let's go back over them, all right? Education. What are we doing with education? Internship? Obviously doing well where you are in undergrad and going to grad school, right? Make sure we're on top of those things. Hustle, real simple, right? Make sure you're outworking people. You should never, ever in life be outworked. I don't care if somebody, if you put somebody next to me that went to Harvard and I went to Fair State University, I feel like I'm going to win. I don't care if they went to the Ivy League school. They're not going to be more creative, they're not going to outthink me, and they're not going to outwork me. Because I'll be up at 2 a.m. with my son, by the way, who's up at that time too, working, grinding. So hustle, that's, that's very important. Number three, build relationships, authentic relationships. None of this fake networking stuff. Don't do that. That doesn't work. That'll leave you in the same role you're in. Make sure you're building authentic relationships. That's very important. And master interpersonal communication. Master that. Try to master public speaking. Very important. Remember my first public speaking class? I got up there, I thought I killed it. I got my grade back. Dr. Ray had this wrong, that wrong. I had mar red marks all over it. She said, hey, you have some good skills, but you need to work on this. You need to work on that. And I kept working. And I said, hey, is this an A? Uh, I think it's an A minus. Is this an A? You know, I, it, was a, it was a goal to get that A. And she made you work for that. She, I don't know, she's, she may have softened up on you guys. I don't know if she makes you work that hard to get the A. She used to make us work hard to get that A. It was very, very difficult. And we had a lot of classmates who were very competitive. So every time we were in, 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 our, in our comm courses, we were competing who could get the best grades. We couldn't wait to take those tests. So make sure you're building relationships, number three. Number four, find your X factor. Whatever that is, find it. Sometimes it's not necessarily what you love to do is what you're best at. So find that X factor. And number five, do more than your job description. Make sure you're doing more than that's on paper for you supposed to, that, that you're supposed to do. Very important. With that, I think the most important part of this is coming up next. I love answering all your questions on, the, on your careers in sports. So with that, we'll open up to questions. <laughs> questions. Don't be afraid. Fire away. You should have a passion for it. You should have a passion for your career, but I'm assuming if you go into a career, you're going to have a passion for it, right? So yes, the passion should carry you to make you want to do more. Now, go ahead, you got it? Yeah. All right, was it hard like, trying to manage all those relationships and then your like, classes and then all of your sports and whatnot? It was like, pretty difficult, right? Very difficult. So think about this. When I was at Fair State University, here, here are the things that I did. I was a student first, played football, student athlete, we won a championship, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was in a fraternity. I was in um, different professional organizations, just a part of a lot of different things that kept me busy and had the five internships. So yes, I was busy. But you know what? My mother always said, 
If you want something done, give it to a busy person. You have to, you have to manage your time right. Go. So kind of follow up to that, were there points where you had to say no to some opportunities just because you realized that other opportunities would put you further ahead? Yes. You know what? I always tell people, and it's hard to do at a young age, it's hard to do, but say no to good for great. Say no to good for great. Because if you, you get caught up in saying, you know what, this is a good opportunity, but it's not it. Just think about it. Think, and I'll take you guys back. There was a guy named Bill Gates, right? Everybody heard of Bill Gates? Pretty, pretty popular guy. Well, way back in the day, late 70s, early 80s, Apple came to Bill Gates and said, hey, we know you, you went to Harvard, you dropped out of Harvard, you got all these great ideas and great concepts. We're going to bring you on. We're going to pay you six, and we'll eventually get you to seven figures to come work for us and build hard drives, right? Big thing. And he thought, man, his parents said, oh, you got to take this. This is this is unbelievable. You're going to get that kind of money? You didn't even graduate from college? This is great. But you know what Bill Gates did? He said, you know what, Apple? Thanks, but I'm not interested in that. And that's a lot of money to turn down. But you know why he wasn't interested in it? Because he knew his dream, what he had was great. It wasn't about building hard drives. In his mind, he said, you know what? I'm going to build software. So you've got to come to me to get the software. And everybody got to come to me. I don't need to be over here isolated with one thing. You got to come to me and get this software. And then Apple and everybody else had to come to him and get the software, right? And then became a billionaire, not somebody making six figures. So understand you have to sometimes turn down good for great to answer your question. Next. Don't be shy. At any point along the way, were you really concerned about money with your jobs? Yeah, money's always a concern. But you know what? For me, it wasn't a big concern because I didn't come from money, so I didn't have money growing up. So it wasn't, I wasn't like going to jump out of the window because I didn't have money. You know, I, I never did have money. So it was like, oh, this is, this is I'm used to it. Actually, I had more money in college than I did, you know, growing up. So it wasn't, the money part of it didn't really bother me, but it, it always comes into play. So, but don't let money be your driving force on things. Because the dream has to be the number one thing. Your passion has to be the number one thing. Because you know what? The money will be there. If you follow that dream, you follow that passion, the money will come. Dr. Ray is doing all right. How do you balance work life? You work hard, you're busy, you try to take care of everything, but you're also a father. How do you make sure you're actually there for your... Oh, you bet. That's, a tough, that's a tough question. I don't know if you ever get that one right. Um, but every day you try to do it. You try to do it. You know, you think about opportunities. Like right now, my um, obviously he's he's very young, so I, I still I take him. You know, we go to events, we do things together. So you just got to try to make it work. You know, but it's something that I, it's something that you don't want to try. You don't want to sacrifice. You want to try to make both worlds work the best that you can. But you never you, you never will be perfect in that area. But but it's important. Don't get me yeah, I know. <laughs> Other questions? Keep them going. Go. Uh, I think I find myself pretty busy a lot. <laughs> and, uh, you seem like a pretty busy man. On average, how many hours of sleep do you get? <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably get about four hours of sleep a night. Uh, so I don't, I don't require a lot of sleep, thank goodness. And I never did really require a lot of sleep. I, you know, I'm running, I'm running, I'm going, I'm here, I'm there. Uh, so I don't require a lot of sleep. But sleep is, it is important. But, but if you, when you're on the grind, sometimes you don't have time to sleep. You know, you have to, you have to go get it. So you was like this busy when you was in college, but also playing sports too though? Playing sports, yeah, just busy. But, but again, it didn't feel like it was busy because it was stuff I loved to do. You know, if you're doing things you enjoy and doing, you feel like, man, this is great. I'm enjoying this, you know? And I didn't spend a lot of time, you know, you know, partying and all that stuff. I mean, I hung out and stuff like that, but I wasn't, you know, drinking, you know, and doing all that stuff. So, so that, that, that takes away a big part of it, too, you know. So just to be transparent, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke. So I wasn't doing that stuff. So um, I did hang out, you know, don't get me wrong. But, but I, still, I still was, you know, 
busy, but I love doing all the things you, that I love to do because my, that was my passion, you know what I'm saying? So if, you, if you're busy doing something you don't really love to do, it feels like, man, this is really a, dry, a drag. But when you love it, you don't even feel it. Just keep going. You're going. Other questions? Career questions. Go ahead. Tell them the story about the NFL. Ah, the NFL. Quick story about the NFL. Ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to play in the NFL. It was my dream to play in the NFL. I, I grew up watching um, great players like Jerry Rice and Deion Sanders and all these guys play, play the game of football. And I said, boy, I want to be like that one day. I want to play in the NFL. Went on, obviously, was fortunate to play college football. Had a, had a solid career that was fun. Enjoyed that. Um, and, you know, obviously, you know, you, you had that dream. So the dream, you know, obviously you think it dies right after football. You know, you're not done. You're, you're not playing. So I started working for the NCAA national office. And I was the liaison for the NFL on some, you know, on some different uh, programs that we did. And, and so... Finally, one, one of the years, I think it was 2011, um, when I was working at the NCAA, I got a chance to work with the NFL directly on a, on a, on a coach's program and a student uh, coach's program. And so I was able to uh, go to New York City, first time I'd ever been in New York at that time, got off the plane, w jumped, jumped in the car, headed to 280 Park Avenue. 280 Park Avenue is the NFL headquarters. And I went up there and I met all these executives in the NFL offices. It was great. I was there. I was leading, leading work, lead on this program. And I just remember meeting all these people from Roger Goodell to VPs. Everybody was, you know, it was great. And during that time, I remember going to the bathroom. And I picked up the phone, and I called my mother. And I said, Mom, you, you never guess where I'm at. And I told her, hey, I'm at the, you know, finally said, hey, I'm at the headquarters. She said, you at the NFL headquarters. She said, oh, wow. She said, you work with the NFL? I said, yeah. And then I said to her, Ma, I made it to the NFL. So sometimes that dream it's different than what you think. But I made it. Even though it wasn't playing, it was in my career, my, my, my other career. And so you can ultimately make it. Remember I told you that X factor? You can ultimately make it to your dream even when you don't think so. So that was a watershed moment for me. Other questions? Questions? Go. Um, I met Greg, you know, back in the day, um, I was doing an internship, matter of fact, in, in, in Detroit at a place called Franklin Racket Club. We were playing ball, and we just started talking, and, he, you know, he, I told him what I was trying to do. Obviously, he was in journalism at the time. He said, if anything I can do, let me know. Give me a call. And he was one of those people who gave me his number. He actually picked up the phone, and we just started talking, built a, uh, a, a great relationship. Now, this is another thing that's very important about building an authentic relationship. Don't come to people and wait till you need something. Because then it's not authentic. It's, hey, I need something now, so I'm coming to you. So I didn't ask Greg for anything for years. We just built a, a beautiful relationship. He invited me over for Thanksgiving and all that stuff. It was great. And then when I needed something down the road, I asked him. But we already had that authentic relationship. And when he needed something, he asked me too. So it goes both ways. I helped him out on some projects as well. When I had my radio show and all of that, he used to come on and do, sell his books and promote things and, and those type of things. So it goes both ways. So when you build those authentic relationships, understand don't wait till you need something to ask somebody and make sure they're really authentic. Did you notice the poster outside my office door? Special K was one of our first keynote speakers. The sports communication program. And that was, that was another connection. See, you just help, just help. Go ahead, you had a question? When, like, all right, you said you played football, so when did you realize that like, you can't reality that, like, you either knew you wasn't going to the NFL and just something happened? Or? No, nothing happens. You just, you know, you, you work out after, the, after your career is over and you realize, hey, you know what? This, you know, you're not getting those calls. You're not getting those opportunities. So you're not going to make it. Now, I played with some great players. I played wide receiver. And on one side of me was a guy that played in the NFL. 
Clarence Coleman. On the other side of me was an All-American named Neil Moser. And both of those guys were one of the two of the all-time greats. We had an all-time great quarterback, Matt McCarthy, who's in the record books. You know, so I played with some great, great players. So when I got the ball, I was like, woo, woo I, got, I got the ball. Because these guys were getting double and triple teams. They were great. I was a good player. They were great players. And that's the other thing. Don't hang on to dreams that are, you know, dead end. I see people before five years out of school saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to the league. No, you're not going to the league. What you're doing is delaying yourself and getting a career going. You're working out. That's great. You're in great shape. But all these other people out here are steady going in their career. And when you try to jump into that career path, guess what? They're way ahead of you. And the game keeps moving on. Don't, the game doesn't stop. So if you know, at the, I, I say chase, it, chase your dream for a year, maybe two. I'm talking about athletically because it's, it's an expiration date on that. Eventually, that's going to come to an end. Even if you play 10 years in the NFL, guess what? You're 30 years old, 31. Then what? You don't want to be on that ESPN documentary broke, do you? Other questions? Career questions? Describe for them your internship at Cadillac 9 and 10. Internship at 9 and 10 was great because I got a chance. It wasn't the biggest station. It wasn't the biggest television station in the world. But I had a chance to go up there and get really hands-on and do shooting, editing, um, all kind of video, reporting, just a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have normally got a chance to do. Um, and I thank all the great people up there. I think the, uh, Kevin and all those folks are still up there. But that was, that was a great opportunity for me. And I tell people all the time, if you don't have to go to a big place. Go somewhere where they're going to love you and let you do the things you want to do. This is like picking a school when you're an athlete. People say, well, I need to go to a bigger school. No, you need to go where you're wanted, where you're going to be able to get, do things. And that's, that's, why, that's what I would advise you when you go to an internship. Go somewhere where you can really, really get hands on and get involved, even if, even if it's a smaller place or a small, smaller station. I was able to get some valuable experience by doing that internship at 9 and 10. It was great. I remember Dr. Ray came up and she evaluated and the first thing she said was, hey, this is a great opportunity for you because you've got your hands in a lot of different things. And if you had been, if you had started out in Detroit or another big station, you would have been just relegated to one or two things. So think about that when you guys are doing internships. How many people have their career down where they want to, what, they, what, what path you want to go into? Have you figured out yet what that may be as far as what that may look like? Somewhat? Okay. Good. Other career questions? All right. Thanks, thanks everyone.